in and then it worked just fine. So, but I had to go through all that first. So, <laughs> so you're here though, Marty. You're here. Yes. We're, we're officially right. live on Facebook. All right. <laughs> hello. 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 I've been, you know, it's I've funny been... with, with events. I mean, you, it, it's so important to show up early. And I tell that to everybody. And when somebody doesn't like today in my live event, I had this morning, our featured speaker showed up three minutes late. And I was like, where are you? <laughs> and what goes around comes around. I mean, no matter how much preparation you can do, eventually something happens. It's just crazy. <laughs> I've noticed with Zoom, it can be a crapshoot. You know, and, and Barbara said as many times as we've done this, as many times as, as we've been on Zoom, you know, there's always some kind of issue. And I, I was getting ready for a meeting earlier and it was like, it wouldn't log in. My computer was opening up all this stuff. I was, I was held hostage by when Zoom wanted to log me in. Yeah, that, maybe that's why we're all excited for live in-person uh, events again. Absolutely. So we can just get around each other in an actual room. <laughs> But, but the thing is, though, even in the live events, like I went to a live event once and the total PA system just crashed. Oh. There was this presenter using a bullhorn. Oh, no, really? <laughs> she was, I mean, she was a trooper. Oh, and wow. luckily it wasn't an, an exceptionally big room. But she was using the, the, the bullhorn and we were kind of, we put every, okay, we just kind of stopped to start we stopped at the beginning and said okay who is hard of hearing put everybody <laughs> that was a little bit harder of hearing put them towards the front because we had no idea when the pa system was going to come back on yeah and all of us that were taller and had good hearing we stood at the back and so just kind of like and we all just kind of liked each other a lot <laughs> right that, that's that's amazing wow i i guess we all have our are the fish that got away stories and we apply those to the speaking world or business or whatever. I mean, there's all kinds of craziness that happens. And when you choose this occupation. <laughs> yeah. That's what I've been for. I've, I've, I'm a person I've run late to everything. My whole life has been one of my, uh, it's been one of those things I've had to work on quite a bit. I was just naturally running late and, and all that anxiety it produces but speaking gigs are like, yeah. I'll, I'll be there an hour early because oh, I, know I know what yeah. can go wrong, will go wrong, especially when it comes to tech and hooking everything up and be, just being prepared. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> As I, I was just telling Jason, I bought a new computer. And I mean, this is, it's actually funny, but I bought a new computer, a MacBook Air, and I'm loving it. Yeah. Except on Zoom, when I use my virtual background, there's this big spotlight right in the middle of the virtual background. Uh oh. And oh. I, have, I have to absolutely stay right in the middle of it. And if I happen to move even a little bit, so that's why it's like, so I'm on my regular computer, but on my new one, I can't use Zoom because and you should, the first day, Jason was like, Barb, what are you doing? <laughs> Wow, it looks really unusual. funny because your head is just centered in the circle just, and then the rest of the background. Like I'm a floating head in a. <laughs> yes. Oh, so I've been on the phone. I've been on the chat with Zoom for hours, <laughs> and they and they and I finally just said they said, "Well, you know, take a couple of screenshots." So I did that. By the time I got back to the to the the chat, they said, "Oh, here, oh, thank you for using our live chat service. I'm now closing this chat. Thank you for calling support." <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, it, well, and from what I've heard, the new Mac operating system, one of the reasons that they even came out with it is to have higher power for virtual live virtual. presentations. So, so something you know, between Mac and Zoom has not mesh, meshed. Wow, that's surprising because I know they've done a lot of work with Ecamm because Ecamm yeah. is notorious for, if you're using a, well, you have to use a Mac, I guess, for Ecamm, but your computer will get hot. I've heard of people oh, actually wow. putting ice packs around their Mac so that when they're using Ecamm for presentations, they keep the, the whole system cooler because if it gets too heated, of course, what's going to happen? It's going to lock up. It's going to turn into a PC. It's going to turn 
into a, a Microsoft product that we're all used to. <laughs> and that's why we've gone away from PCs and the Macs. And then we run into this locking up problem again. And so the, the new operating system is supposed to handle that. And, and so I'm surprised that there's any problem with Zoom. So, and, so yeah. now I'm to the point where, okay, so a suggestion, who should I, so maybe I'll just, maybe I will take it back to, and see if it's a setting in within MacBook, within Mac. Could be. Yeah. Because I have tried everywhere. She said, well, try a different virtual background. I've tried every one. Wow. Huh. And I still have, and the, in fact, Jason, one of, on one of the shows, I mean, because this is what our show is about, life. Yeah. Because business, life in business and business in life, it happens. Sure. So that that first day that I got it, he says, "Like, what's with the spotlight?" And I went, so I tried <laughs> every one. And remember the green one with the? It looked like I had green leaves popping out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not as bad as my story with new computers. My goodness, I, I'm about the least technical person you'd ever meet. I mean, anything I've learned about a computer, I've had to be instructed, like in person, not, not even YouTube does it for me a lot of times. <laughs> I have to be shown how to do something. So I wouldn't make a very good programmer and I wouldn't make a very good graphic designer because you have to use all these programs and everything. But when I first started to use speaking to promote my business, the, the second, we sold out four shows, four workshops. I did these, these workshops were only 40 to 50 people in the room and we sold out four of them within 48 hours. So we were booked. So number one went perfect. Number two went perfect. And then we had a week and I thought, you know what? It's time. I'm going to upgrade my computer. So I bought the new computer. It came in late. You know, had all these additions to it and everything. The day of the workshop, I decided to turn it on for the first time. Oh, and no. for some reason, Something happened between when I turned it off at home and went to the location of the workshop. I did something really, really wrong <laughs> because when I got to the workshop and you know, set up my screen and everything and everybody's coming in, talking to me and all that, I couldn't get my computer to turn on to save my life. And, and this was a, this was a four hour internet marketing training workshop. So the whole thing is taking people into Google and into HTML code on the back end and teaching SEO stuff. I mean, you have to do that showing screens. I couldn't even turn on the computer. I was just mortified oh, no. and I was just getting into speaking. I had a joint venture host and, I just thought I'm letting everybody down. You know, the, the amazing thing is that somebody came up to me afterwards and said, I am so refreshed from this talk because you didn't use PowerPoint even once. Yeah. Oh my God. So crazy. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, so it's, that's all, so it's crazy. sometimes a blessing when things like that happen. <laughs> it really is. It shows you how, how much, how well you know your material. Oh, I don't even remember what I said that yeah, night, though. Exactly. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, just, I was, it just flows out of you. Yeah. What, but I, yeah. I guess we all have experiences like that. <laughs> What's so funny is I just, I'm speaking at my first live event uh, since COVID. First, open to the sure. public live event uh, since COVID and uh, on Friday and the guy who is organizing the event called me up about an hour ago and said, Hey, we're having it outside. And we can't get the TV out there. Are you okay? Not doing it with slides. And so that's funny that you, you brought up that conversation and like, yeah, I'm actually fine. Not doing it with slides. Sometimes when I have the slides, it actually float messes with my flow. Like, oh, yeah. I'll, right. I'll like almost have that crutch of like looking at the slide when I don't really need to. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think instruction is different. We need, we're visual. We are visual yeah, people. Yeah. We need to be guided through. And, and I, I, you know, I maybe even teach a little bit more than I should when I get into a, a workshop or any kind of speaking situation, because I, I just love to share what I've learned. And I, you know, the, the pros, the real pros that give 90 minute talks and they, you know, they go for 
for 80 minutes telling their whole story and then the rest of it's a big sales pitch you know you'd never yeah, see yeah. me at one of those places because i i just don't do that i i teach too much i mean i like to just share what i've learned and i you know i've been in business for 25 years and life has been very good to me so i like to share just you know, the missing links and put things together for people and and the, it, it seems to be received well by people when i do that and and so I, so if, if, if something needs to be shown by screens, I'm going to show it because here we have to go through the whole sequence so that people actually learn how to do things. And, you know, most people are visual. So I prefer that method when, when there's actual instruction. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's, it's just always fine that we all, I, I for myself, I love hearing when speakers tell these stories because this is about what, this is what happens to life. And so often, and Jason and I have talked about this several times, is that sometimes it's the fear of something like this happening mm -hmm. oh, yeah. that, that speakers don't get started to even to start their career because they're so afraid of making a mistake. They're yeah. so afraid of, but what happens if, well. Yeah. Oh, oh, fear is, is debilitating. Fear is, is something that people run away from their whole lives. And it may be even something deeply embedded in their childhood takes forever. They're, they're just trying their whole life not to experience that same feeling in the gut that they had when they were 10 or whatever it is. And, and we, all, we all have something that happened early in life that we try to avoid or have tried to, to, to go through. And I, you know, I, I was the same way. I mean, I was that kid that, that would give the very first book report in, let's see, what was it? Sixth grade. And I was the one at the front of the room that was shaking. All he had to, all he had to do is read, read my book report at the front of the room. And I was literally shaking so hard. I couldn't read my own handwriting. I mean, I don't have very good handwriting to begin, <laughs> to begin with, but, but that even made it worse. And I, I just, I just held my paper there. And even though I couldn't read a thing, I just para paraphrased what I thought I wrote in my book report. And that got me through, but I was like, gosh, I never want to do that again. Why would anyone want to get in front of a group and speak to people? And, and that carried me all the way through high school and college when, you know, I was a, a marketing major in college, which is doing research and presenting and all that. I, I told the guys, I said, I hate public speaking, but I'll be the writer. So when we have to write all the reports, if you guys do the bulk of the presentations, then I will do the the written part and that worked out pretty well what a terrible way to go through college it yeah. wasn't until after that that I, you know i got my first real job and i was forced into a situation to go speak to 600 people all of a sudden on behalf of my boss so he said oh, I, I can't go to this i want you to go to this and go speak on my behalf huh what <laughs> me no no i don't do that well that day i joined toastmasters and i had four months to plan this darn thing and practice it and i went down there and i killed it it was awesome he did, i did a great awesome. job and i thought well maybe there is a future in this and so that was kind of my beginning of getting out and under from that and i you know i realized years later i was i was taught that fear is actually a good thing Fear is something that is given to you on purpose. <laughs> it's a tool. And, and don't run away from fear unless you're being chased by a bear. Now, you know, there are circumstances when fear is good in a different way. It helps to save your life, right? But the mental aspect of fear is something you can use too. And, you know, when I, I, I actually left Toastmasters and I rejoined several years later and one of my speaking mentors when I really wanted to get serious about speaking I, I, I joined two clubs and one of my mentors said to me that fear is a good thing and I said what, what are you talking about how could fear be good and he said Marty I've been speaking for 45 years and I am still nervous every time I get in front of people really you never look nervous to me I couldn't believe you even said that but he said, Marty, fear is a good thing. The moment I am not nervous any longer in, of getting in front of a group and speaking is the day that I sit down forever and never speak in front of a group again, because I will never give my audience my best. 
And as soon as I heard that, I was transformed forever because I always want to do my best. I want to come on a program like this Mm -hmm. and hear even a year later that somebody's life was changed from one sentence that came out of one of the three of us. I don't care who, as long as there was something that person spent time listening to us and then they implemented something and that was really changing it it impacted them somehow in a positive way that's what speakers live for that transformation of their audience and that's what makes us nervous because we we're worried that we're not going to be able to do that (laughs) and and then when if if we're able to channel that and make it happen that's where that's where it, it makes everything all worthwhile all the effort that we go through yeah and, to, you know, and for me, it's, sometimes it's like, Barbara, yeah, this, this is good. This is good. That's that that feeling in the pit of your stomach where you're kind of like, oh, oh, okay, yeah, no, come on, Barbara. Yeah, you can do it. Feel the fear. Do it anyways. Yeah, Barbara, you're fine. You know, but it, it you're exactly right. You're exactly right that you just, that it's that, and, but it's a good thing because as you, and, and I'll, it'll take me many minutes to get into what I'm talking about, even if I happen to have notes in front of me to sure. get over, to get over that. And then, oh yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, now let's just go. And then people come up to me afterwards and say, what do you mean you were nervous? Yeah, yeah. Right. You should, exactly. You didn't, you didn't look nervous. You didn't Nobody can see that. Yeah. Nobody, can, oh, you're the only one that can feel that. Yep. Well, and you were there, Barbara, this morning. Sinet presented to us in our weekly Wednesday professional speakers practice group called Speakers Speak Live. Yeah, and she great was giving trip. great trip. I'm loving it. I, I am so glad you're a part of that. And, and just seeing people transforming from week to week to week and improving their skills is just so fun to watch, including myself. I mean, I'm just one of the group. It's not like I'm, you know, the master of speaking. I, we're all in there together to practice and improve. Speaking is something that can be practiced your entire life. And there's always room for improvement. It's a lot like golf. <laughs> but, you know, Sinet came in and she even said to everybody, I'm so nervous. Yeah. I said, you're going to do great. And ex- that's exactly what happened i mean people were just glued to her message and none of us thought she was nervous that's that's what it's like to be in a in a a group that is supportive like that when you're you're all building together we want everybody to succeed yeah yeah and then one other thing marty that you and i we talked about in relation to jason was that you have some of your speakers that and jason is does sales Mm mm-hmm and so that was one of the things though I thought we, we could have a little bit of a conversation about. Absolutely. Um, just because so many speakers, it's like, okay, yeah, they get over their fear of doing the actual presentation, but they have trouble making an offer. Right. Mm. Yep. So, well, yeah. yeah. Jason, uh, tips or Marty, what do you think? Well, I'd love to kick that off because I, yeah. I have I have a very specific suggestion for people about selling. Um, especially, especially for speakers, when you're on stage and you go through all that effort to prepare what you're going to say, to, to get the speaking opportunity to begin with. I mean, that's marketing, that's time, and to put everything together, all the ducks in a row, so that you finally get on that stage. And now you're going to deliver the material. Why would you leave your audience hanging? You give them all this great instruction at the end, and then you, you're you're just going to say, "Oh, that's it. I'm done." <laughs> Never Good luck to you. Well, no, that's not what you do. You're there to help people first in, inform them that trans that transition from from one point to another is even possible. That's what you're there for as a speaker. And then give some ideas so that they can get started on their own. You don't want to just be all story and no meet. And that's what event meeting planners are looking for right now too, are people that are going to give actual steps that people can start working on even during the presentation, let alone after. So you need to be in tune with what your audience is looking for. But I mean, unless you're given a half day or a full day, it's just not realistic to say, well, here's the 35 steps you need to do, go do it. I mean, it it takes more in-depth 
analysis of where each person is. Everybody's different. Everybody's in a different place. And it could take one-on-one. -on -one. It could take small group work. It could mean some homework on your own and then come back and work with that speaker some more. So there's always a next step to go deeper. And you as the speaker know that that's true. So it's up to you to put an offer together that is manageable by people. It's attractive. It's possible for them to actually get through so that it's not so demanding of their week that they can't do anything else. <laughs> it's got to fit into their schedule. But once you have that all together, I believe it's your obligation as a presenter to not let down your audience. You're, it's, it's your task to give them the opportunity to say, hey, there is another step to this if you want to go to the next, you know, to go deeper with me or a, a more extended process to really make this happen and let them make the decision. So that, I just think that's, you know, that, and maybe that's new. Maybe that's new. I, I think that there has been some transition in how people are allowed to sell from the stage. So a lot of times, you know, you're brought in for somebody pays you twenty thousand dollars to come in for a keynote. You're probably not going to do something like that, especially if it's a company audience. So you really have to know your audience and who hired you before you start going out there and making offers. I absolutely agree. So this is not all across the board, but it is something you can work out with companies before you even get on stage and say, hey, we've yeah. already, you know, there, there's no selling here, but I want you to know there's this program that together as a group, we're going to start in two weeks and we want you to be part of it. It's already paid for. I'll be here. We're going to be here for two weeks, whatever it is, whatever that program is, all of that can be established before you even take the stage. But the, the central focus is to know that most of your audience is not going to take action with what you say right then and there, or when they walk out, there has to be another step for them to take. How did you work that in, Marty? How did you figure that out? As you you started out from this guy that you know you didn't like speaking in public, and that, and then and now you're at a point where you're coaching and helping other people do that. How did you figure some of these pieces out? Well, when I started my very first website in 1996, and it was a pet project, I was a corporate sales guy. And the, the three things that I knew I never wanted to do was be in sales. I didn't want to travel the country. That's what my dad did when I was a kid. He left Monday, came back Friday, and I just didn't want that kind of life for me or my family. And yeah. I, I knew I didn't want to be in accounting because accounting was the most difficult. I mean, you either get it or you don't when it comes to accounting, right? When I was in college, that was one of the just basic 101 accounting just about drained me. I mean, it just took all my time. So I knew I didn't want to be an accountant. And I knew I also didn't want to have anything to do with computers. So, I mean, you know, here I am today, a web guy for Definitely. sure. But back then, I was the guy that held everybody up when, when you know, the teacher would say, okay, go through step A, step B, step C. Now everybody print and everybody's would print, but mine wouldn't. I'd go through the same exact process as everybody, but Marty's wouldn't print. So I'd hold up the whole class. Oh, I guess this just isn't for me. I don't want to be involved with computers. Well, by 1995, I found myself traveling the country selling accounting software. <laughs> How? Oh my God, that's so crazy. That's Talk so about living in hell. So I, <laughs> so I, I just, I, I knew I had to start my own business. So I, I started a website and you see my, see my, my, my guitar over here. I'm a guitar yeah. player and I call myself a closet guitar player. You'd never hear me play out, <laughs> but you know, I've got a PA system and everything. I like to make a lot of noise, but it, traveling all over the place, I had a hard time connecting with people. So I, I started a little ad and I took it out in the local newspaper and started a little business of people that are looking to play with other musicians. And it turned into the, uh, you know, I had one of my participants come to me and say, well, this is really great. I love this list of bass players that you sent to me. I love this list of drummers. We can form a band right now. And he said, you should put this on the internet. And I, I said, what the heck is the internet? <laughs> I had no idea. I mean, it was 1996. So I had to partner with somebody and bring, bring somebody in. Well, this website did so well that after six months, when they offered a promotion to me at work, 
I turned them down and I quit and I went full time to promote that website. And I knew, I knew to do that, I had to be capable of getting up on stages at jam nights where bands were playing and promote this thing. And uh, today, even today, musicmates.com is still out there and it's one of the largest musician referrals in the country. And I, I mean, it's all automated and it's all free. I don't, you know, I just use it as a reference. It's, you know, it's, you know, it's just one of those things that I did. I like to show it as a historical monument sort of, <laughs> but it did teach me a lot about business and about getting involved and in, in, in how to sell. I mean, you ever want to test yourself, try selling something to a starving musician. I mean, they, mm. they say you should use 10 X, right? The 10 X rule, whatever you sell should be 10 times the amount of value, whatever you're selling it for or yeah. the musician that's more like about 25 or 40 or maybe even more than that. I mean, every dollar they spend has, has got to be worth a lot. And I really had to, to work on my sales skills just to sell to those guys. But the, uh, in answer to your question, kind of coming along from that, that long-winded story is that I found myself at the very first internet marketing conference that I would attend. And it was, I can't remember when it was, 1998, 99, something like that. And all the speakers are talking about setting up autoresponders. And I didn't even huh. know there was a name for that, but we had all this stuff in place. We were doing all this stuff they were talking about on stage. And I was just sitting there and a, a guy next to me says, do you have any idea what those guys are talking about up there? Yeah, I've been doing that for about four years now. Really? Can you explain it to me? Because, you know, they're just up there selling and I can't understand anything. Well, sure. Here, let me write it out for you. It works like this. So I see this guy in back of me kind of peering over the table. And all of a sudden, I've got like eight people around me as I'm describing what they're talking about at this conference that everybody paid a thousand dollars to go to. And that's when I thought, wow, that's, there's an opportunity here. So I, I started just sort of collecting what we were doing. And of course, I was taking on clients by this time and people from, from Music Mates would say, hey, well, I've got a business on the side. Is there anything you can help me with? Because Music Mates is obviously taking off and, and uh, they wanted to, needed help with their, with their results and their web marketing. And I said, well, sure. And, and then they started saying, well, we'd like to hire you, but how do we know you'll be around in six months? And that's when I came up with the name here next year for my company. Huh. Don't you love that name? That's awesome. <laughs> Basic sales, right? Yeah. <laughs> Eliminate the question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All these, that's like, Jason, you got to tell why, you got to tell Marty why your um, passive, why your eat faces. Oh, eat faces. Okay. So, Everything's a story, right? Uh, um, I, I had led a company that was bankrupt into a, a great deal of success, and we just won franchisee of the year across the country. And I had my leadership team with me, and, and these guys from the franchise were following us around. Like some other owners within the company were were following us around. We were going out to bars in Chicago, and uh, this one owner was telling me his pity story, and he was just constantly telling me all the reasons, all the excuses of why he he was not like us, why he was a failure and he was like it was you know the franchise they didn't support him they told him when he became an owner that they would help him lead him to success and you know they weren't around they haven't helped him lead him to success and his employees they didn't care about him and the agent of the, the company that we were we were representing they didn't care they only cared if you put if you hit numbers and it got to be a point and I finally got fed up with all the excuses. And I'm like, listen, Eric, and I'm like, I hear all the reasons that you're giving me at the same time. I went through all those same exact things. You're right. The franchise did suck. They did not come around. They did not support me. They did not lead me to success. They didn't lead me to franchise the of the year. That's for sure. The, the, the agent, the, you know, who we're representing, they don't care about you. If you hit not until you, unless you hit numbers, you're absolutely right. So you know what I did? I figured out how to hit the numbers. Because it's not rocket science. They didn't right. make you guess at what they needed. So I went out and I did that. And I'm like, you know, all the shooting down his reasons. And I'm like, you know what? The reason the difference between me and you is at the end of the day, I'm a lion. I'm a lion that eats motherfucking faces is what I said. <laughs> uh, that, you know, when it, if it comes down to me eating or my people eating, my family eating, you, you best believe we're going to eat. And it probably would have died there because it was like, you know, in a bar in Chicago and it was super loud. But I swear, as soon as I started talking, it was like the music dimmed down 
And my whole leadership team heard me yelling at the top of my lungs at this guy about eating faces. And so <laughs> they made it the mantra for the next year. We had even more success that next year. And then I left and started my company and they gave me a book. The leadership team got together and gave me a book with pictures and stories of our adventures together. And um, this one really touching paragraph was when I met them, who they were, and as I left, the transformation that I helped help you know, bring them along. And they said, at the end, we're lions that eat fucking faces. And yeah. so it's been a, it's been my mantra through and, and my clients love that, you know, when they're having a tough day, it's like surviving, or, you know, in, in spite of the circumstances, persevering in spite of the circumstances. Right. Yeah. Well, that's a really good analogy. And I, we are so very well aligned because I have a lion story too. I am, I've been on pins and needles since uh, since Barbara yeah. introduced us about your book, and so I, I've been dying to hear about this. <laughs> well, you see this dog up here, right? Yeah, yeah. That is action. I just got tired of everybody I heard on stage go through their whole pitch, and then all of a sudden at the end they'd say, now I've taught you all this great stuff, it's up to you to take action. Take action, take action. I finally realized who the heck is this action person? So I had to find it. And lo and behold, action was already right on my first book cover, which is called Winning the Internet Dogfight. That book came out in 2004. Don't try to go buy it. I think that's the last one in existence. Nothing <laughs> in its current anyway, so it doesn't matter. But on that book cover, we took that picture and we formulated into a much bigger image than what you see up there. It's, it's actually a, about a three and a half foot high poster. And I take action everywhere I go. Every time I get on stage, I'm holding that thing. And I explain that about taking action, that nothing matters unless you take action. Well, I'm here to tell you to suggest to your audience that after 15 years of doing that, and action has been very good to me, people would call me even six months later, and they'd say, I have no idea what you do. But you're the guy with the dog, right? <laughs> I mean, so sticky marketing. It's awesome. I, I didn't even plan it when we made the book cover. It was, it just kind of happened through, you know, rolling around, along. But, you know, action is not enough anymore. It's just not. You can't just take action in all kinds of different directions like that kind of dog does. If you've seen that kind of dog before, they're just yeah. frantic, man. Frantic. They're just all over the chasing place, running tail. in circles, yeah. chasing its tail, yeah. It's, it's just not enough. There are just too many options out there. There are too many opportunities for time sucks and uh, you know, shiny objects and all kinds of things drawing your attention and we've got COVID to boot and family and I mean just all kinds of things that can come up at the last minute so so I, I have a whole whole new angle with this and it it is very lion related and that's where lions always win came into play lions always win how to spot what you want in business and life and get it too because a lion doesn't think about all that stuff. You know, when it's hungry, it has to eat. And unfortunately, as you know, Jason, a, a lion's favorite meal is a wildebeest. And a wildebeest is faster than a lion. So a lion is in kind of a conundrum here because he's got to chase something that's faster than he is if he wants a good meal or he's going to have to eat berries and roots and all <laughs> whatever he can find just to survive. And that's not going to fill the pride. You know, the pride is the family of lions, which the lions are responsible for. So mm -hmm. the, the priority becomes much more focused and specific to the point where that lion doesn't have an option to fail. It has to win. So what does it do? It doesn't just practice sprinting and getting faster and faster. It can't. It's, it's too lurpy and runs out of energy so it has to strategize more it has to go to a a nice pond with you know weeds so it can kind of hide in the weeds and camouflage itself and then then it sees the herd coming and it it picks out that one that it knows it can get to within a short sprinting distance and it charges and it charges hard and it charges fast and it just goes and if it misses fine but you're gonna go sleep it off and we're gonna try it again but eventually after maybe two or three tries or less that goal is accomplished and when you think of it like that 
you know, what, what are the steps that that lion had to take? Or was it frantic, like a dog just running around in circle? No, it, it had it all planned out. It rested before, and then it knew where to go and place itself in that spot so that it had the best chance of, of striking, and then went hard. No distractions at all. And that's where the lion comes into play for me, is that if you, know, that you were saying before that, that the company had all these, these goals, and the people were looking at these goals as being, as being unattainable. And you said, no, you, you just need to prioritize getting to that goal. It, you know, it's really amazing that I found, before I wrote this book, I started asking people, this was, gosh, seven years ago now, everybody I came into contact with, when I talked to on the phone or at networking events, I'd just say, what do you want? What do you want for your business or for your life? Whatever it is, I, I just say, what do you want? And leave it open. And nobody can answer that question. Yeah. They, yeah. If they're calling me on the phone for, for marketing stuff, they'd say, well, I want more sales, of course. Or I want you to take over my website, of course. Or I want to write a book, of course. Or I want to go on vacation more. What? <laughs> you know, that's the frantic dog that's kind of running around all over the place. Be ultra focused. You have to be ultra focused. So of course, after talking to literally hundreds of people and asking them that question and finding out that only maybe, maybe 2% of the responses I would get would even be close. I had to develop something. I had to develop some process for people to go to go through to, to really dig deep within themselves and figure out exactly what they really do want. Because most people really don't know, even if they think they do, when they start reading through that book and going through what I call lion charges instead of just examples or, or exercises, yeah. <laughs> lion charges, they, they realize it and they think, oh, well, that's a bigger question than I thought. So they have to go through this and it takes time. I mean, it's like a, a retreat in a book. It's not, you know, in 30 seconds, here, here's what you do. No, you, you need to dig deep if you're going to find out what you really want in this day and age and figure out what that just, and I'm not just saying one thing is what you accomplish and then you're done. You, you pick one thing, maybe this week that you're, that you absolutely positively have to get done by Friday yeah, and other things yeah. can happen. Other things can get in the way, but, oh, you have to get that done by Friday and you are not going to stop until that's done on Friday. And then Monday morning comes, you're going to figure out another thing to do on <laughs> in that week. So there, there needs to be that process in your life and your business so that you're continuously seeing where is that wildebeest? What, <laughs> what, what do I need to do to market and to focus on it and pave the road so that I can get it? Mm -hmm. That's incredible. I can't wait to read the book. I'm excited. <laughs> And, and just to be able to put that into our life experiences, because that's absolutely the truth. People, okay, people, let's let's have a little come to Jesus kind of moment. So exactly what Marty just said. We have we must take action. And I mean, it's so nice. And but I I am finding that so many things are running in circles. I was on a on a training call this morning. And guess what we were talking about? Planning your day. <laughs> set your priorities put it on your calendar you know know what know where you're going know what you want because because things happen yeah there, there's kind of a wrinkle in that in that process because i mean i've i've yeah. been in search of this myself for yeah. years and years and i've heard the same thing i mean i'm in some high-end mastermind groups where mm -hmm. we go through this in intensity like three hours at a time every time we we meet and and i i've come to find that there needs to be a balance. It's kind of like the yin and yang theory that if you, if you decide, you know, it's not enough just to say you want to make a million dollars anymore. Right. It, the only thing people want to talk about is making $10 million this year, right? Okay. So let's use that number. So let's say by December 31st this year, you absolutely positively must have a $10 million company. Is it possible? Well, of course it's possible, but what are you going to have to give up to get there? If you're married and you have six kids and you're coaching little league, you might want to think twice about taking on the fall season, because if that really is your absolute priority, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to pave the road. 
Now, if your family is more important, that's fine. You have to recognize that and say, well, maybe mm -hmm. we can cut it back to 5 million. Because <laughs> you, know, you yeah. can't say that million anymore. That's not enough. That's just middle class for people now. So we got to talk in those big numbers. I mean, that's what's sexy right now. And, and, and what people forget about is the balance component that when you make some type of number, your priority like that, well, certain things have to fall into place, not only with your family life, but also with what you are capable of doing yourself versus with what you need other people to do with you or for you versus what you're going to have to invest in maybe going to a class or two or investing in that $5,000 course with coaching involved or more. And, and that's, you know, that's where people say, oh, maybe that $10 million goal isn't, isn't really my priority after all. Well, good thing you realize that halfway through the book, <laughs> because a, a lot of people get really depressed and down on themselves and they beat themselves up and they, gosh, I'm working 21 hours a day. Why am I not getting more sales through my website? Why am I not getting more traffic to my website anymore? Like I used to, and, I mean, just all these things that people take personally, and, and, and I'm, I'm here to suggest that it's, you know, it's not just you. Don't be so hard on yourself. The times are changing and it's really difficult to have so many things going and to expect yourself to perform at this superhero level 20 hours a day, every single day, seven days a week. Uh, you know, we need to, to, to learn the process of, of what, real wants are and how to attain them for smaller things and work our way up. That's, that's my solution that seems to be working so far for a lot of people. Right. That's what we were talking about this morning. Cause you know, like so many of us, we have families to deal with. Like my, my grandchildren live with me. I want to be able to see them. Absolutely. Um, and so it's, where 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 are your priorities because so often i think in fact i just i was just doing a thing on on goals on setting goals and that they have to be sincere goals that is this is this goal really going to enhance your life because you can say you're going to do something but if it's not enhancing your life you're not going to stick with it oh that's so true yeah. And that's exactly what's happening to people. And, or they're like, one of the things that I find is that when I talk to people sometimes is that they're building their, they're building their ladder to success. And Jason and I have talked about this, but then they find out half of the halfway up or all, they're already at the top of the success ladder and it's on the wrong building. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good analogy. I like that. <laughs> yeah. building and all of a sudden, so they've got all this success monetarily. They're making the big income. They've got the corner office, but they're miserable. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's not life. Mm -hmm. That's not good. You know, there has to be the goals mm -hmm. have to be around the your whole person. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's what people now, like Jason and I, we've talked about it, like even on this show of how we came to collaborate with each other. It's about collaboration. What can we do together that's going to benefit all of us? Right. Oh, that's such an important point because you're so much more, you're so much stronger by aligning with people. And I, I, I think that kind of, it, way back now that you bring this up, I mean, this wasn't planned for me to bring up, but it's it's certainly true that that way back in the early days of the internet, joint venturing was a, a big deal. You know, you kind of went through the wickets. You, you you got a conversion rate on your website, and then you'd start an affiliate program, and then once you got conversion rates for that, you'd try to find a what I call what I would call a golden goose, somebody that has a big list, and you'd say, "Hey, I'm getting these conversion rates. We got this affiliate program. I got a bunch of affiliates making all this money. Let's roll this out to your list, and you'll make a whole bunch of money, and we'll do this together, a joint venture partnership." I don't know if that ever really died out. I mean, there I'm joint venturing with people all the time, but I I, I think the I think the word has changed. I think it's morphed over time. And now people, because we can't, I mean, we can go more places now, but we're now we have threats of Delta and all that coming back and masking and being in our homes again. Who, who knows what's going to happen over the next year? 
But I, I think over just the past year, there has been a rejuvenation and aligning with people. And they've turned into mm-hmm. joint ventures. So mm-hmm. all these all these mastermind groups, the speakers speak live that you're part of, Barbara, all of these places that were brought into to, to meet new people virtually, there should always be in the in your thoughts. Hmm, is that a person I should call sometime during the week and have a one-on-one conversation so that we can potentially align with each other? Who Mm -hmm. knows what can come out of that? But I I think that's one of the few benefits that have come out of the whole COVID thing is that it has brought us to the realization again that we need to work together and align with people and continue meeting people and always be be going to toward that instead of building my team who work for me or work with me but what is my team out there that i can go to and we can just talk back and forth and refer people to each other and i think that is really building right now i i, I could not agree more i, I know it's, it's stronger in my life now the collaborations the people i'm building with than it's ever been in my whole you know in my whole entire life and i LinkedIn is a huge part of that, you know, and that's where Barbara and I met and, uh, but just being able to meet people across the world. Where are you at, Marty? I'm in Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Denver, Colorado. Okay, awesome. I have a client in Colorado Springs, uh, but it's like one of those things, like I'm in Michigan, you know, and, and Barbara's in Illinois, and, but, you know, now we're so close. Technology, I know, hasn't been, uh, <laughs> hasn't been uh, your guys' thing you're excited about, but for it to bring us together like this, where we can do more joint ventures. I like that word, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And you know what the funny part is, Jason? You know, Marty lives in Denver. And I said to him, the, oh, I don't know, last, must have been last week. I said to him, I said, oh, yeah, I'm going to be in Denver in September. And I said, well, where do you live in Denver? And he says, well, I don't actually live in Denver. I live in a town. I, I live in a, but nobody's ever heard of where I live. <laughs> Like with me, when I say I live in, I, I live near, near in Chicago because I've ne- nobody's ever heard nobody of Nobody knows. It, yeah. yeah, it's just easier that way. I mean, you know, yeah. we are a tourist town and yeah. we are a skiing family. So, so we go skiing every week and every time we ride up on a chairlift with somebody, the first question out of their mouth is, where are you from? Or, you know, we kind of look local like, so do you guys live up here in the mountains? No, we live in Denver. I mean, it's just, it's just quicker to say, yeah, Denver area. <laughs> It's, you know, it's just easier, you know, so that's what Marty and I had this conversation that, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't really live in Denver. I live in Aurora. Right. <laughs> went, You're kidding. He said, no, why? I said, well, my girlfriend that I'm going to visit in Denver lives in Aurora. That's, that's awesome. so crazy. That's yeah. so awesome. Isn't that's that so what? awesome. So and I'm great to meet system. in person when you're here. I'm going to be there. So we're going to be able to meet in person because I'm going to be in Denver and I'll probably be there for like four or five days. That would be great. And I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> and that's like the, the, the things that you and I have together. It's just amazing. The people that we know that we've met totally separately and right. yet we know each other. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that is networking, isn't it? I mean, it's a, I, you know, I've, I've found that there are groups of families that hang out with each other. And, and in my in my book, in the, my Lions Always Win book, one of my favorite sentences in there is that you become who you hang around. Yes. And so I, I couldn't put my finger on who told me that, but it's the same thing. You are what you eat, right? Yep. And, and I, I've really taken that to heart to be very careful about people that I spend time with. We all get the same amount of time. No less, no more. We all get 24 hours a day and seven days a week. So we all have to be very cautious of who we spend time with. And and that group of people that is, if if you want to hang around people that are really just down in the dumps, you you have, everybody has friends and they want to be able to call on you. That's great. You need to be there for that person. At the same time, you need to really budget how much time you spend away from all the positive people in your mastermind yeah. groups that are you know, doing more with their business now than they ever have in their lives. And they, you know, these are the people that are saying, this is the best time to be owning your business in the history of our country. And, and some people would listen to that and say, you have it's got crazy. to be just crazy. You can't sell anything out there. Nobody's buying anything. You can't even get anything delivered anymore. <laughs> so so if you, so you have to just position yourself 
so that you're around the right families of people. And that's why, you know, Speakers Speak Live is a great family to be around. National Speakers Association is a great group to be around. Toastmasters is a great group to be around. A mastermind group that you choose where you're you're all you know non-competing but you're all working together and you're you're all moving forward in a in a positive direction that's where people need to be spending their time right now and when you do that you you have a a whole different outlook on what's happening right now and where the where the country's going where the world's going and where your business can potentially go and that's what you know that's where things get exciting so i i like looking for families <laughs> and one of the things that i am finding is that by being in different masterminds that have different people from different niches Mm-hmm. from different organizations and they'll come in and they'll say oh you know, th- you know i'm in this niche and this is working for me and oh i'm here and this is working for me and oh and i'm over here working and this is working for me and you know what you can get one little pinprick of oh well if i take that from there and this from there that might work for me absolutely, absolutely. rather than always staying with your own yeah you know, yeah your own group get some diversity in your groups right especially if you don't like your results especially especially if you don't like your life right you just surround yourself around different people get some diversity i've discovered something else that that everybody i haven't met one person that defies this rule everybody is a true expert at something If, if you've been alive for 10 years or more you are an expert at survival. No one has lived exactly like you. No one has the street smarts just like you. You've adapted your own method of living. That's at the very bottom level of expertise. But I'm sure within just a minute, I could within even 15 seconds, I could identify an expertise within anybody. And I've proven it in front of 150 people in an audience. Matter of fact, you want to try it? Sure. Yeah. Have, have, have either of you not written a book yet? I've not. You've not? Oh, can, we'll, we'll go with Jason then. All right, you ready? Okay. So Jason, if you and I were to meet at a coffee, now time it. You ready? Time this. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So <laughs> if you and I were to meet at a coffee shop, which we can do now, <clears throat> and I was to ask you one question where you were able to reply to me for the next six hours straight without me ever saying a word. And I wouldn't be able to because you'd be so excited about that topic. What would that topic be? And start with the words, how do I? So Jason, how do I? Sell authentically. Done. That's your topic. Yeah. That is your topic for your next book. That is the topic for your speaking platform. That is the topic that should be all over your social media. That is what you are all about right now. Could change in five years, could change in 10 years. But that is your first topic that you could be featured in articles, in all kinds of different possibilities. Yep. All you have to do, just that one. Yeah, no, the book is coming. I got to write it. but it's in my bucket, it's in my bucket list. It's got to yep. get written. You know, and a friend of mine, she says that she can take like, the, and this is one of the things that I'm going to tell on myself. One of the things that I'm working towards is that she says that she can take all of our, um, like these, all of our shows, all of our podcasts, all of our, whatever we're doing to, you know, our Facebook lives, whatever it is that we're putting out there. She can take all of that and have a book. Sure. It's she just takes transcribing. All, takes all of it, transcribes it. She says, you have enough already mm-hmm. to have a book. Yeah. That's possible. That's possible. I, she does it I, all the time. I, I would. If more people have a book sitting in their computer already. All they have to do is give me access to some of the content and she will take it and then just rewrite it and then get of it. And then once you have the gist of it, she can help you put it together and get it up. Yeah. Here is the challenge. And I, I've tried, let's see, I've, I've published 26 books now. <laughs> and I, so I've had to figure out how to do it that works best for me. I'm a slow writer. 
takes me forever. I, I write a paragraph and I'll sit there for two hours and beat the heck out of it until it doesn't even resemble what I originally wrote. It's, it's terrible. I, so, you know, what else have I done? I, I've walked around down the street with my recorder, you know, with my phone in my hand and I've just talked into the phone. Well, that's okay, but it doesn't produce really good content. I've transcribed blog posts or transcribed, I've transformed blog posts into more formal content, but I always wind up updating it and I read through it and it's like, well, all right, you left out a couple of steps. So I have to go in there and tweak it. And it takes me longer than if I would have just written it myself. What worries me about a lot of the trends coming out for shortcutting writing Mm -hmm. is that or another way is speaking a lot of people say well just speak more put a speech together get out there and speak and record your speeches and then send it in for you know to fiverr for 10 bucks you can have somebody transcribe yeah. it you know the the challenge is is this when you're on a speaking platform your job really is to teach 15 to 20 percent the rest of it is entertainment to keep your audience engaged. With a book, it's the opposite. You wanna have some entertainment, but what the books that are selling right now and the books that even more importantly that people read have exceptional content, thorough content, complete content. All the books I write are in steps. You follow a sequence, one through five, one, two, three, four, five. Here are all the sub steps you need. That's what people want to see. They want to really get into the guts of the process. And if, if your podcast interviews provide that, wonderful. But if they fall short of providing the detail to implement something, yeah. that's where I get nervous about the quality of the book. And a, a, a book with, mm -hmm. with low quality can damage your business and your name just as much as a good book can put you in the stratosphere of a business and just catapult you into all kinds of amazing directions. So just be cautious with that, that the, that the end result is very that. thorough. That's, that's what she says too. That's, that's so good, Marty. I, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I, I see a lot of people shortcutting into books just to say they're authors in, in a lot of shortcut ways and um, I believe me, if I took the shortcut way, I would have had a few books out by now because it's like I do the same thing. I sit and I write and then I beat myself up and uh, in and everything going through that process. Uh, so I know I need to shed that. But my biggest thing is I want to put quality out there. I don't want to have it be just something that are out there to say I have a book. Right. And it has to be in alignment with your with the other. See, I, I believe I've learned this the hard way <laughs> that you know, on, on my shirt, I have a here next year logo. There's three pieces yeah. to that logo. There is the writing component, the speaking component, and the internet marketing component. They all work together. And if you leave one of those off the table, you are just leaving money on the table. It's as simple as that. And so, so a lot of people are trying to just do the book, do the book, do the book. And they forget about the other parts. I just want to get Amazon number one bestseller. Oh, my life will be so much better. Play the game. I mean, that's all it is, is a game. Or a lot of people are just ignoring that component entirely and just doing the internet marketing. They're still in SEO is my life. <laughs> I got to get on top of Google and my whole business will just explode. And then there are other people that are only speaking. They, yeah, they're going from speech to speech to speech to speech. Just give me my $10,000 keynotes. That's all I want. I don't want to do anything else beyond that. And in all of those cases, you're simply leaving your message on the table. And that is what the, that's where the value is. You're not just leaving money there. You're leaving your message on that table that the world really needs to hear. So there has to be a combination of all three of those components. I love it. That's an amazing way to end, to end the hour. <laughs> that was an amazing way to end the interview. Yeah. Awesomeness. Awesomeness. Marty, how do people contact you? That was my question. Good, 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 good. <laughs> I beat you to it. I beat you to it. I know. That's why we're great together. It's like, you know. <laughs> yep. I would suggest that people go to herenextyear.com. H E R E N E X T Y E A R, here next year.com. And in the top right corner, there is a button called members. I would suggest that you follow that and sign up for what I call a lifetime free 
membership to here next year. And that thing has been free for 15 years and it's not going to (laughs) change. It's just a place for me to put things and update them frequently. And in there, there are three things. If right now you are, you're doing internet marketing and you're, and you have a book, but you want to get into speaking. There is the ultimate checks, checklist for speakers in there. It's like 10 pages with contributions from Lois Kramer and Frank Kitchen and, uh, and myself and Mike Domish. I mean, these are professional speakers out there. The, some are the best in the business. I mean, Lois Kramer, what she put in there is just amazing content. So you, so you focus on that. And then there's another one that if you have the other two components and you're thinking, how do I get more website traffic? I have a document that I've updated for 10 years, every twice a month, twice a year, twice a year, I update this thing. And it's called 101 realistic website traffic methods. So you can prioritize by how much they cost, how easy they are, how, how easy they are to implement, expected ROI, and by necessity, some things you just have to do. <laughs> and if the book is what you're looking for, then the first thing you have to do is you need to figure out what your what your genuine expert method is. I call it your gem. And that is what people are willing to pay for, whether you're writing a book or speaking out there or have services, people will pay for your gem. So this this document called The Method in You is a little workbook for you to walk through. This is all at no charge, but I like people to go through all of these so that they are familiar with how I can help them more should they have the interest in taking the next step with me. But if you don't, that's fine. At least I've provided some value so that you're in that lifetime free members area with me. And I've, I've had people in there for over a dozen years that that's are awesome. still just, you know, asking me, when is the next update coming out to the 101 realistic traffic methods? (laughs) I mean, that's, that's awesome. I just love that. Like I said, I just love giving. So go get it. (laughs) Go get it. And if you're a speaker, speaker, come and join the speaker live on Wednesdays. Yep, absolutely. Every Wednesday, you can, you can go to speakerspeaklive.com and you will see, that just brings you to the Here Next Year website to a page that talks about the details of the meetings that we have and what's involved with it. And you can also go to Facebook and join our speaker group, which is called Speakers Speak group.com that just forwards to the group on Facebook. So we just, you know, I have interviews in there too. I have a private podcast just like this, where I bring in speakers and we talk about the business and you can just, I'll see your name come in and I'll approve it and you'll be in there and we can discuss speaking. Awesome. Awesome. Marty, thank you so much. It was so awesome listening to your experience and just sucking, soaking it in. So, I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity. You. Yeah. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Anyways, everybody, have a great week. This is Olympic week. Is anybody want uh, some of the stuff going on with the Olympics? uh, You know, and some of the people that are doing well without having an audience, and other people are not doing so well with (laughs) that. Not doing so well with an audience, I guess. Some are not doing well at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. uh, But at least we're we're back a little bit. Right. Yep. So um, my grandson is a uh, shot putter and he loves oh. to shot put. And it's like, so that it's, it's fun to see the professionals. I, I always liked pole vaulting. I never could figure out how they could get. Huh. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah. So if you're, you know, have a great week. We'll love to see you next week on the, every, you know what? We never even told anybody we're the everyday rich show. <laughs> If they're here, they know. Yeah, we yeah. just kind of started tagline. talking. Hey, that yeah, yeah. that's fine. <laughs> Everyday Riches Show. I'm Barbara Ellison. I'm Jason Tracy. Uh, Marty Dickinson, make sure to take action, right? But right. do it like a lion. The new way yeah. of taking action. Be a lion. Be a lion. <laughs> and what did you say right. about eating faces? <laughs> eating faces. Go eat some faces. <laughs> that's great. Something being a little lioness. Go eat some wildebeest faces. You gotta stalk them down and then charge at them. Exactly. The other, night, the other night, I watched The Lion King with two of my grandkids. Oh yeah. And it was like, oh yeah, right. Yeah, they, were, they were hunting wildebeests. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. So, yep. anyways, everybody, right. have a great week. You have a great week. Bye. Uh, uh, oh.